Hello, my name is Benek. Along with the crew of LPFM, we've gone to 2022's Chequestria, during which we were able to ask a few questions to a certain musician that you might know of. The man behind such hits as Solidarity, The Stabilize and Frailty. The one and only Prince Whatever. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. And how about you? Yeah, it's been fine so far. Just staying at the vendor table, mostly selling stuff. That's most yeah, about that. How's Chequestra going this year for you? It's going great. Yeah, I wasn't actually a vendor last year, so this is slightly different, but it's super how fun. Is it, how is it different from not being a vendor? I get to sit down all day <laughs> instead of walking everywhere constantly. Doesn't sound extremely exciting. Yeah. I like but it. Well, I guess meeting people is fine. Yeah, the exciting part comes later, so that's mm. fine. <laughs> you have a concert this evening. Yes. How are you excited? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Not the first one. Definitely yeah. not the first one. I am, but it's I just... Oh. It's becoming a routine. No, I'm just now. stressed like, if I'm going to do a good performance or not. <laughs> i got to try my best. And are you? how are you coping with the stress, actually? Uh, I know, I just kind of deal with it. <laughs> it, just, it just happens, all right. Yeah, just like, yeah, it always happens, so just do your best and see what, see how good it is. Let's get to the questions. Yes. How exactly did you start with music? With music? Um, well, when I was in high school, I was an artist mainly. I would draw mm -hmm. like, you know, anime kind of stuff because I was edgy teenager. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> had that phase. Mm, yeah, yeah, I, very much. But, um... My best friend, he was, he didn't like anime, but he really liked music and he played guitar mm -hmm. and I thought it was really cool. So I thought I'd try it and got to the point where I had to make a choice. Like, do I spend all my time pursuing art or do I spend it doing music? And I just, I think I prefer music. So that's, that's where I went. A pretty humble start. Uh, did you make any music before joining the fandom? Yes, but it's bad. <laughs> it's like I've made some bad music in the fandom, so it's e even worse. It's so bad. Don't, don't look for it. <laughs> And uh, how did you come up with the name Prince Whatever? Uh, Pretty hard to say. Uh, bloody name. Um, Everyone says Prince Whatever anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'll give you the whole story because I usually don't. But uh, do you know the author Darren Shan? Unfortunately, no. Okay, he's like a British author. He does. Mm -hmm. He did a big series of books about vampires, and I was an edgy teenager. I really liked these books, <laughs> and I wanted. There's a the second book is called the the Vampire Prince. I was like, okay, I want that's gonna be my name. That's a cool <laughs> name. I like that name. Very edgy. But it was taken. <laughs> How? Yep, that's the internet. And so uh, again, I was like a teenager, so like, uh, whatever. So Prince, whatever, also taken. I was like, fine. I just Prince, whatever. And it's like, yeah, that one's available. This was 2009. <laughs> so this is before the fandom even happened. So I just took it. I was like, sure. And then. Two years later, I started making music. The most important the part name. is that you don't have any numbers in your username. Yep, I didn't want numbers. That was the main <laughs> thing. I did not want numbers. Didn't want like underscores, double X, any of that. X, 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 yep. underscores, vampire lord, X, X, X. Almost. Something like that. That could have happened. <laughs> mm, how would you describe your music style? Oh, geez. I try to change it a lot. Um, mm. Mostly kind of alternative metal, I guess like kind of rock punk stuff in general that kind of genre of just guitars and singing but do you limit yourself into one uh, sort of genre or do you like to switch things up a little uh, i kind of do whatever i feel I, but i just mostly like metal mm -hmm. punk mm -hmm. music but um i did like an edm track once and it was all right people actually really liked it but i just don't like making them that much it was fun i felt like it at the time but in general it's not really my thing uh, there's some acoustic songs, you know, like some pop punk songs, some really heavy songs. Whatever so mostly, I feel like. mostly it's just guitar stuff. Yes, yep. the guitar stuff. Out of all of your songs, uh, which would you say you're most proud of, and uh, which do you think represents you the most? So that's two choices you have to make. Okay, so most proud of has to be Solidarity because I, I, it just it works so well. I'm so happy with that song. It mm -hmm. just it worked really well, and I'm really happy with how it sounds. Um, and everything. I like all the looks. I love the whole song. Uh, one that represents me. That's so. That's such a weird question. <laughs> um, probably frailty. Still, that represents what I kind of want to do with a song in general. Mm -hmm. Like how I, I don't know. That's I've, I've said it before in a couple other interviews. But uh, um, a lot of my songs are kind of similar. But that's because I'm I have this idea of what like the perfect song should be, and I'm trying to make that song. 
So, and sometimes I get close. I feel like I'm close. Like frailty, I thought I was pretty close. Mm -hmm. So some of the songs also sound like frailty because I'm trying to do right, that style, right. it, which is annoying because it definitely sounds similar, but then it's, it's an idea I'm trying to trying to create. But I think that's that's probably the most, the closest one that I think describes what I'm going for so far. What instruments can you play? And how many do you own? Ooh, I can play guitar, bass, um, singing, I guess if it counts. <laughs> Triangle. Lord. That's an instrument. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, drums, a little bit of piano. Is that it? Maybe some other stuff. I don't know what other instruments are there. I don't know. The, c the sitar. The c oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I learned violin when I was a baby, but I can't remember it anymore. So. I think that's it. Um, what was the second part of that question? Uh, how many do you own, and which ones? <clears throat> I have. Oh my god. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, seven, eight, two bases, the Harley Benton, the Fender, the old Evanes, and the old Coffee. That's nine guitars and ten if I count the acoustic. Um, I don't need that many. Uh, some of them are kind of in storage because they're like the ones right, from right, when right. I was baby. I was learning to play. Mm -hmm. Um, I have my one drum kit. I had two acoustic drum kits before. Too loud, too big, <laughs> too expensive. So I sold them both and I have, a, I have a really nice electric drum kit now, which I love electric. It's actually so much easier, especially if you have neighbors. And so an, an electric drum kit is like a MIDI drum kit? How does that It can work? be. Um, it, it's basically like the whole kit is MIDI. You can either plug it into its own interface, which will make its own sounds, right. or plug it into like a laptop or computer, then have whatever sounds you want. I kind of did in between. I took the sounds from my PC, from what I used to in my songs, and I put that inside the drum machines thing. Right, so right. I don't have to have a USB cable running all the way across my room. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit easier. Cable management. Mm, mm, yeah, I hate doing that. That is a lot of instruments. Where do you keep them all? In, in my studio. <laughs> all the well, no, some of them are in storage. One bass is in storage mm. and two electrics and an acoustic are all in storage because they're old or kind of broken. Right, right. And, but I want to keep them because they're like sentimental. Transitional maybe. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. But um, you, you can buy like a rack where you could all your guitars. Yeah, I've, I've seen something like that. So and I guess got, it's that's got most of it. The yeah. drums would take the most uh, space, probably. But yep. you've sold two and bought one, so yes. The, um, yep. the net total is one still. Yeah. The where well, my, my, my bed used to be, I've got a second room from just for my bed now, mm -hmm. instead of having to live all inside just my bedroom. <laughs> so where the bed was, now there's a drum kit, so it all fits just about. <laughs> Yeah, you can sleep on the floor as long as you have the drums. I used to. I used to do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it sucked. <laughs> For like three years. Uh, where did you learn to play the guitar? Because, uh, well, you're most known for your guitar proficiency and your, <laughs> and your voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, mostly just YouTube, really. I think when I was... So you are self-taught from the beginning. Mostly. My, my, my father taught me like a few chords because he used to play like, um, he's played like Spanish guitar. He told me like he taught me the he taught me the basic like chords like C G E D all that stuff, mm -hmm. and then from there my, my friend I said in high school who's really good at guitar I learned from him, and then we moved somewhere else and I was on my own for a couple of years and I just used the internet to learn stuff there. Right. Yeah. And has there been any motivation behind trying to learn that guitar, or was that just something you wanted to do and kind of did? Kinda yeah, and then people people did like when I played guitar, so I wanted to get better. And there was mm -hmm. bands I listened to that were really cool like. I used to really like Dragon Force when I was younger. I tried so hard. It's so hard. It's, I still can't play any of their songs. <laughs> but I tried, and it was it, well, that was good motivation to like. To be fair, I I was introduced to Dragon Force through Guitar Hero. Yeah. So, like most people, went, basically. Yeah, it was so hype when they got that song on Guitar Hero because I listened to them a couple of years before that, a couple of albums, and then my friend said, "Oh, I've got Guitar Hero." Because I didn't play, I didn't have mm -hmm. the Guitar Hero, but my friend had it, and he was like, "Oh, they got that Dragon Force song that you like." <laughs> Which is <laughs> at the very end, you yeah. unlock it. It was impossible and it's to impossible, play. Impossible, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we had a cut here because uh, I wanted to ask Prince about his guitar. Oh, should I open it? Oh, okay. Let, let's <laughs> see it. Let's see it straight away. Yes. Could you show it to the camera there? Beautiful. Beautiful. Can you tell us something about it? Okay. So, what it is, is a Squire Bullet Strat, which is actually really cheap. It's a really cheap guitar. It's like um, 100 bucks, basically. Um, I can see the signature. Yes, but it has been com 
almost completely customized. Um, mm-hmm. All the internal wiring was taken out. All the shielding was stripped out. Um, Humbuckers are different. The bridge is the same. This is the same. The nut is a new nut. The tuners are all new locking tuners. One roller nut, a roller um, tree instead of two um, static string trees. Re standard, finished, and painted and signed the headstock and clear varnished it. Custom artwork by Beatlinked is his new um, artist name. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of fading because we use some cheap clear spray after we did the so artwork. So it's not printed. It's no, it's drawn. No, it's hand, hand drawn on here, yeah. That looks too perfect to be drawn. I don't believe you. <laughs> it, he's very good. <laughs> he's a very good artist. Okay. Um, very expensive too, but it's worth it. But yeah, this one, I'm not sure how long it's going to last now because, well, the guitar is fine, but obviously because the clear coat isn't very good, it's kind of sticky. Mm-hmm. You can see lots of my skin crap is kind of all over right, it. Right. It's not great. And the, it, it's kind of starting to fade from where the pick is always hitting the plate. It's kind of cut through the, the layer. Oh yeah, uh, kill switch. So just stops the sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do that really you fun. You can do the bucket head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's super fun. <laughs> yeah, this whole thing is like um, super custom now. It took like a couple of weeks. The parts I got to add in is more expensive than the whole guitar. <laughs> right, right. So that's why I bought a really cheap guitar. So I don't want to waste too much money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super fun. So I basically, the body is a cheap guitar and everything else isn't. Yeah, yeah. The right. body, the, got it. the neck. That's it. Yeah, everything else the is... The artwork, also very expensive. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, new art. All the internals is new. The shielding, the wiring, all the parts, the switches, the um, yeah, tuners, the nut, the tree. Uh, the locking, the strap locks as well, strap buttons, they're locking buttons now, so it won't come off. Mm, how are they different though? Um, if, I can, if I can show you the strap, if I have, whoop. Everything falls down. Because with the locking buttons, you get special locking. The different. These yeah, ones. I can see that. So when you put you it. shut the camera? Okay. Oh my God. So. Everyone needs to see These that. are special, special locking um, strap locks, which come with the, stra- the buttons you put on the guitar. And they have a little pin inside, so when you put it on, you pull it, it, it can't come off now until you pull this little tab at the end and then push it off. Right, right. Yeah, so you can kind of throw your guitar and it won't come off. <laughs> it's great, it's safe for safety. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's super custom and I love this thing. The plan was mm-hmm. I would buy it whenever I bought it, I think it was 2018. Yes, late 2018. And I was going to put it in the charity auction at the last BronyCon because they said it was the last one yeah, ever. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll put this, this will be my contribution. But so many people had a similar idea. So many people put things in the auction and they couldn't take any more. I was like, okay, oh, oh, so I guess you, I'll keep it. Yeah, they just <laughs> stopped accepting things. Yeah, so right. eventually one day I'll put it in a cherry auction, but I don't, I don't know. I really like it now because I've used <laughs> it for so long. <laughs> it's actually a really nice guitar. Oh, but yeah, that's my, my baby. Maybe let's do two separate questions. What brought okay. you to the show and what brought you to the fandom? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's good. Um, so for the show... um. I used to watch one of the old Oni cartoons on YouTube. Do you know Oni NG? He does like animations. They're kind of edgy. Unfortunately, no. Okay. He was the same Not kind of time, maybe. He was the same kind of thing as um, Max G. You know him? Diggity Demon. Diggity Demon, yes. He was a similar yes, kind of I thing. Very, very him. funny, very edgy. But right, um, right. back in like 2010, he did one called Leo and Satan. And I watched that. And then I really wanted a t shirt from that. So I went on the sh- site that sold the t shirts. Mm-hmm. They also sold a Brony t shirt. I didn't know what Bronies were, but I thought the t shirt was super cool. It was like. um. You know the scene kind of artwork where it's like cartoon characters, but they're all bloody and messy. Like, see a lot Very of SpongeBob. Edgy, yes, yeah, I, yeah, I do, I do. It was kind of like that style. It was Pinky and Rainbow Dash, you know, bro hoof. And it said right, bronies right. before honies. I was like, that's super cool. I like that. So I bought that because mm-hmm. I just thought it was really cool. And I wore it to college. And one of my friends. One who of was, the regrettable uh, choices we do in college. It might, it might be. <laughs> that's the reason I'm in the fandom. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wore that t shirt in college. And a friend of mine, he asked me, oh, so you, you're a brony? I didn't know that. I was like, oh, what, is a, what is a brony? What are you talking about? I was like, yeah, there's a new, there's a new se- series of My Little Pony and pe- guys really like it. And I actually used to watch the old series on VCR. My parents had it mm-hmm. and I would just watch it because I was a baby. And I really liked it. So I was like, yeah, I'll try. I'll have a look. And that's how I got into the fandom. I was like, this show's really fun, actually. And then... And when was that? 2011, 2012? I think it was mid-2011. So it was like at the end of season one? Yes, like season that? two was pretty new. I think mm-hmm. the f- the newest episode at the time was um, May the Best Pet Win, uh, season two, right? This is season, season two. Okay. Yeah, that was we the have newest. an expert here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was the newest episode when I joined. And that's the first episode I saw. And then I went back to start from the beginning. Right. And, and binge, yeah. binge watched everything. Oh, yeah. I, I binge watched everything that was out at the time. Um, oh yeah, and a friend of mine, 
I think it was a friend of mine told me there was Pony Music, or maybe it, I think it appeared on YouTube when I was just look, watching episodes, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, they made a song about this. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Back so then when you could watch uh, full shows on YouTube. Yeah, back in the good old days. <laughs> I think it was Tombstone or Glaze, one of their remixes. I was like, this is so, this is sweet. And I was already doing, I was in um like, like two or two bands, I think at the time already. And we mm-hmm. were doing lots of like local shows around the area. Right, right. So I was like, I want to write some songs. And so I, I think the first thing I did was I covered one of Tombstone's remixes and it was super fun. This called? No, <laughs> not yet. That was, that was yeah. after my time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> after my, after I joined at least. But um, yeah, and that's, that's how it started. And people liked it. And I just kept going because I, I enjoyed it. So yeah, it was great. I have a question here. A quick answer. What do you hate the most and love the most about the fandom? Oh, geez. Well, it's not really the fandom. There's, no, <laughs> there's nothing I hate about the fandom. It's just certain people because, you know, there's always bad people. Right, yeah. There's yeah. no way you're going to have a fandom. Like, some people are like, oh, I hate this fandom. They're so bad. I'm going to leave and join the furry fandom. It's like, do you think they're different somehow? <laughs> do you, are they suddenly not people anymore? They're they, still people. They There's overlap <laughs> extremely well. And, and they overlap yeah. a lot, yeah. It's like, you could join, I don't know, fucking Coco Melon fandom and still <laughs> find people who are bad people. Like, yeah, right. don't try and fool yourself. <laughs> But I think that like the Brony fandom likes to attract uh, extremes. So you either they have can. very lovely people, the best people you've met in your life, and you also have the worst people you could have met. That in is your true. Life. Yeah, some people who like the they like the contrast of being super edgy when the show is super nice. Yeah. So yeah, yeah which is annoying. <laughs> sometimes it's funny, sometimes not. <laughs> uh, mm, so so what is, what is it about the show and the fandom that you're still making music uh, about it? I just I enjoy the fandom. I enjoy the cons. I enjoy the show still. I still rewatch sometimes. The message is always good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the show just means a lot to me. I don't know. I really like it, and <laughs> I just want to keep doing stuff. About also, it. force of habit, maybe. Maybe yeah. But I, yeah, as, as long as I enjoy it, I'll see, I'll keep doing it. I don't I don't like doing things if I don't enjoy them. So <laughs> another quick question: yes. What's your favorite collab you've been a part of? Favorite collab? Ooh, like real collab? Um. I think they're both Jikro collabs. The one on my channel, Open Up Your Eyes, which um was su- like I originally I wasn't super into it. I was like, yeah, this is fine or whatever. But then it, it did really well and it actually sounded really good in the end. I'm super happy with it. And on his was Together Against the Sisters, which mm-hmm. is which is I think one of his most um viewed songs now. But yeah, again I was like, oh, this is fine. And then once but once he finished everything, I was like, this is really good. <laughs> and then everyone really liked it, so it made me really happy. So I think both of those are the two favorite ones. Yeah. This is not going to be as fast. What's your favorite musician or band to listen to? That's one of them. And which ones inspired you to do what you do? Ooh. Oh, God. How many choices do I get? <laughs> so many. A lot. Okay. So um, maybe three favorites, lis- favorites to listen to and three inspirational. Okay. To listen to probably Green Day... Blink-182 and bands like Asking Alexandria because basically there's a whole genre of bands who will sound like them. Um, for inspiration, probably Fall Out Boy, Hands Like Houses and The Amity Affliction. Right, right. So Fall Out so Boy is like kind of pop punk. Pop punk. Uh, Hands Like Houses is like kind of heavier. Emo maybe? Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like very that. Very emo as well, yeah. Maybe. And then um, Amity is super emo but very heavy as well. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. super, yeah, the great <laughs> Uh, are there any shows other than uh, My Little Pony that you, that you enjoy? Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Please watch that show. It's so good. <laughs> it's I haven't watched it. Oh, I haven't so watched good. The Mandalorian either. It's so... Man, that's everyone good. talks about it. And If uh, you like Star haven't. Wars, the Clone, like the Clone Wars, the first three seasons are kind of rough because it was kind of a kiddie show. But once right. they started getting going by season three to season seven, it's so good. It's like some of the best Star Wars that exists, in my opinion. Uh, what's the creative process behind uh, creating the music? Ooh, it's difficult. Um, I usually start with instruments. I just play guitar until I find something I like, mm-hmm. some like some riff or some chords that I think sound really good. And I'll try and write a chorus first because I feel like the chorus is always the most important part. It's the part that repeats. It's the part right. like people will hear because it repeats. You'll hear it the most times, so it needs to be good. Otherwise, if the chorus sucks, then who cares? <laughs> That's the most important part. Um, it's like the drop in in dubstep. Ex- exactly. Yeah, if the drop sucks. Music. That's like there's no point in a dr- dubstep yeah. song if the drop is bad. Yeah. So chorus first. Guitar is melody, then you want your rhythm guitar, then your lead guitar. And from there, kind of, I just, I write all the instruments with no real idea for what the song's about yet. Sometimes there's an idea by the time of the chorus, there's usually some kind of idea, but it doesn't need to be. Um, so all the instruments got intro, your, your verse, your pre-chorus, chorus, 
second verse, blah, 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 solo, whatever, breakdown, end. Um, and then listen to it, all of it, and think, okay, how does it make me feel? What kind of, is it sad? Is it angry? Is it like, um, I don't know. What other things, what other emotions are there apart from sad and angry? <laughs> Frustrated, <laughs> yeah. bored. Yeah. Or happy <laughs> sometimes if you're lucky. Mm, maybe not. But um, yeah, just like what emotions and like is it in that way, mm -hmm. the specific way the song sounds, is it applicable to like a certain character or something that happened in the show? And then I'll try and write from there. Try to like, what I feel like it would be, be very difficult to write a heavy song about happiness and love. Well, I did a happy song about not happy things before how does creativity affect you do you plan everything in advance or does inspiration strike you out of nowhere Ooh, i, I try and um i feel like because you can burn out quite easily when you're trying to be creative and you need and it's, if it's your job you just need to keep mm -hmm. doing it so it's, it's tough and sometimes sometimes you can push a little bit and you can and then you can start being creative mm -hmm. even if you're burnt out but it's it's hard because if you push too hard then you're even more burnt out and you're just like Ugh, i hate everything and i can't write music i suck i should just quit but um but then when you are inspired like you can write like a whole song like Boop, done whole song and it's a really good song that's basically how solidarity happened and enemy undefined they both happened like in one day just out of nowhere when usually a song will take me like two months so the inspiration is good when it's there but it's rare and yeah if when you burn out, you, I still try to push sometimes, but it's hard finding the right balance of how far you can push before you just kill all your creativity <laughs> completely. <laughs> so. uh, as an artist, uh, what do you worry and stress about the most? Mostly it's making good music. Like, like sometimes I'll release a song and I think it's really, really good and then it won't get many views and doesn't seem people like it that much. It makes me really sad, but that's just how it is. Like then you got to go to the next one and try again. And that's oh it's a big worry when you when you make a song and it fails like if a song i think is kind of like meh and it's then it fails i'm like yeah well i expected that but if it's some something i thought was good and it fails it really sucks and uh, it hasn't happened that many times it has happened like twice so far but it really really sucks when it happens that's the biggest thing i stress about though i have this question marked as please uh, uh, please ask um if you could be a fruit which one would you be and why Ooh, a fruit I Let's know. expand it. A fruit or a vegetable? Or a vegetable. Are there any fruits or vegetables that if you eat it, you die? <laughs> I'm sure there's some. That should be me. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat me. I'll kill you. Um, I don't know. I think my favorite is like a pear. I like pears. They taste good. They're like apples, but sweeter. So, so basically pears. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was great having you here. Yeah, it was great being here. Thank thanks you so much. For, thanks for your time. It was so much fun. And uh, that was it. Yeah. <laughs>